So the topic of the presentation is uh, how, how can we uh, improve connectivity uh, in, uh, in Central Asia with uh, aircraft which are uh, suitable for, for this type of, uh, of flying. So regional market, uh, we, we all believe that the regional market, uh, which is defined actually by uh, aircraft below 100 seat, is very essential to the air transport economy. If, if you look at the numbers, actually regional aircraft though defined by uh, uh, below 100 seat, passenger, commercial passenger below 100 seat, make up 20% of the fleet worldwide. And they served almost 4,000 airports in the world. And they carry about 300 million passengers every year. So it's not a small market, it's not a, a niche market, it's a very important part of the uh, economy of the transport, of the air transport. And on top of that, it's a very resilient business in terms that it is less sensitive to a crisis like we are seeing today uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, starting from China. Uh, the local transport is a lot less affected uh, by the, uh, let's say, vagaries of the world economies. So investing in, in, uh, in regional transport is always a good bet for, for the airlines. It's very important to develop the connectivity uh, between, between airports, between cities, between countries. Uh, actually, half of the world airports, they have only regional aircraft flying there. So they connect uh, uh, half of the world. And with a limited risk, because it's a smaller aircraft, every year uh, around 100 uh, city pairs destination are created in the world with only with ATR aircraft. So every year we contribute to 100 new markets which will grow, develop, stay or maybe disappear. But at least the markets have been tested with, a, with a aircraft which is the lowest risk. And there has been a number of studies uh, made, made by uh, well, uh, econom economists that show, sorry, Let's go. Uh, that every increase uh, in the number of flights of 10% uh, has an immediate impact on economy. Uh, you, you see that the, the GDP is growing, the trade is growing, uh, and the tourism is growing also. Because the more routes you find, you provide. Uh, to, the, to the tourist market, the more tourists you will have, and uh, we have a very important case uh, here, especially in Uzbekistan. So, Central Asia, which is defined by the, the, the five countries that you see on the map, uh, which is not an homogeneous uh, market, but uh, they, sh they share a lot of similarities uh, in terms of growing and development. Actually, 92% of the flights, they are pure domestic flight. That there's only a small portion of the flight which are international. So in between the countries which are sharing a lot of culture, history, and economic uh, uh, development today, there is very, very little connectivity. Actually, there are some countries where you cannot even go one to each other. Flying to uh, Tajikistan to uh, Kyrgyzstan is not possible today. That the, the countries have 800 kilometers of borders, but there is not a single flight between Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. And I'm not commenting about Turkmenistan because that's maybe for other reasons. But again, uh, connectivity in Central Asia is uh, very limited and Despite that, well, the distance are quite small. I mean, 80% of all the flights in the region are less than 1,000 kilometers. So not a difficult flight, not a complicated uh, journey, but just the aircraft to do this kind of flights, they are not present in the market. 
If you look at all the short flights, which I defined before less than 1,000 kilometers, you will see that uh, almost 60% they are made by single air aircraft, which is either 737 or A320. So aircraft which are designed to fly three, four thousand kilometers, they fly very short flights. And uh, the share of regional aircraft is only 40%. So clearly there is a, a, a difficult matching between the need of the airlines and uh, what the, the, the fleet of the airline are providing. And this is why it's important to have the right aircraft for the right market. And why do we believe that turboprops are the right aircraft? For very, well, simple reason. If you look at a turbofan engine, well, you have a thermomechanical engine which is inside and a kind of a inside propeller which is called a fan. If you look at a turboprop engine, it's exactly the same engine but with a much bigger fan. And why do we put a larger fan on the, on the same engine? Is because actually it's the same engine core but the turboprop are really optimized for the lower speed. The most of the flight on the short flight will be actually on, on the, on the uh, climb and descent phase. So on a very short flight, uh, the turboprop engine will have an intrinsic advantage of uh, 50, 40 to 50% uh, in fuel burn. And that makes a very different uh, economics to the, uh, to the entire operation. In ATR, we have a unique family of uh, regional turboprop aircraft. We have the, the ATR 42, which is a 50-seater, which is today the lowest uh, trip cost. So if you want to start a flight with a li limited risk, you, you will operate an ATR 42. And if the market is growing, then you can operate an ATR 72, which is uh, up to 78 seat. And this will give you the lowest seat cost. Uh, that means if you divide the trip cost by the number of seats in the aircraft. So we have two models which are perfectly adapted to the, the need of regional connectivity. And these two models you can adjust according to the demand of the flight, but they have the highest commonality is that the same engines, the, the, the same qualification for pilots, so you can have a single operation in your airline with two aircraft models. And uh, th this is also unique to this market. And Consequently, uh, the ATR aircraft on this market over the, over the last 10 years, uh, uh, they have enjoyed 70% market share against the, the competition and that's the proof that we are in ATR delivering the, the best aircraft for the, for the regional market. Well, I just want you to enjoy the inside cabin of, a, of an ATR aircraft. This is a very modern, very comfortable, and it's very similar to what uh, Airbus can provide on an A320. So the cabin, but also the silence and the connectivity uh, on, on the aircraft, we have developed uh, our product to be uh, really seamless with a larger single -aid aircraft. And of course, we can have business class, so we can have a high capacity aircraft, and we have also some cargo combi version that we call Cargo Flex. If you look at what the aircraft can do in the region, that's not the maximum range, but that's what we call the soft uh, uh, spot, or the, let's say the ideal range of the aircraft, up to two hours of flight. That's 1,000 kilometers, and that means that everywhere in Uzbekistan and around in the surrounding country, you can have reliable service, comfortable, low costs with an ATR aircraft, and you don't need to find 150 passengers to, to start flying on this aircraft. 
Today, the aircraft is available with a lot of uh, uh, features that you will not find on any regional aircraft. The, the ATR is flying in Siberia in the most difficult climate condition. It's flying on very short runways. It's flying on unpaved runways. Uh, and we are developing more functions so we can operate uh, in, in very difficult environments where no other aircraft can go. So as a conclusion, uh, we are the most efficient regional aircraft in terms of fuel burn compared to well, other turboprops and other jet aircraft. So that, that will be the aircraft that Central Asia really needs to, uh, to develop connectivity uh, in the years to come. And sorry, just wanted to say thank you for the presentation and hope you have learned a few things today. Thank you.